creativity is a way of living life that embraces originality and makes unique connections between seemingly unrelated ideas. Good day everyone, I'm Teacher Hannah, and today I'll be sharing to you all about creating interactive instructional materials for teaching science. And now, let's be creative. Here is our learning target for this session. As an educator, I can improve my instructional materials by integrating interactive elements to make them more engaging and personalized. With that, my talk is divided into three parts. First, the introduction. Second, the classroom application. And third, something to add. Dear educators, let's think about this. How would we describe an interactive instructional material? According to the Mausai and Aguna, interactive learning materials are learning modules that are being developed to stimulate and engage the student's learning. Thus, the role of the teacher is to provide students with the requisite tools to embark on this journey, filled with adventure, curiosity, and wonder. According to Das and Yeager, 2009, Science teachers are expected to create an environment conducive for students' active question. Due to the digital era that we live in, we have various technologies available. All these new technologies have one thing in common. They both support synchronous and asynchronous sessions and learning. So now let's proceed to the pros and advantages of creating and using interactive instructional materials inside our classroom. First, it can provide immediate feedback to the learners. Second, it can increase the learner's interest to listen and participate in class, both during synchronous and asynchronous. Third, it can induce easier recognition and mastery of a specific topic. And lastly, it could be easily accessed in any device. Thus, effective online teaching activities should be designed, facilitated, and directed for cognitive and social processes. And now I quote from Earl Nightingale, Creativity is a natural extension of our enthusiasm. Thus, effective online teaching activities design, facilitate, and direct the cognitive and social processes to promote more personalized and meaningful learning experience and outcomes. A sense of presence contributes to the effectiveness of online learning activities. Now that we all know what makes an interactive instructional material and its advantages, I'm glad to share with you how I create my interactive instructional material in science and some samples to showcase creativity and application during both synchronous and asynchronous session. The following tools, applications, and platforms are used during my science class. Namely, Pear Deck, Jamboard, Quizzes, and Interactive Sites, Google Earth, and Google Docs, Games, and Interactive PowerPoint Presentation. And now, let's begin with the first one, Pear Deck. Pear Deck is a slides add-on making it effortless for educators to add interactive questions and formative assessments. You may download it as a Chrome extension and it will surely make your synchronous classes more engaging. We recently used Pear Deck in our science class during our discussion of Earth and Space. By using such, students who are shy and even introvert in nature have a chance to share their thoughts and answers anonymously, thus giving everyone a chance to participate in class. And that's for our Pear Deck. And now let's proceed to the next one, Jamboard. Jamboard is a digital whiteboard that lets even far-flung teams sketch out ideas and save them and will be able to access it on any device. Jamboard could be used in answering essential questions at the beginning and reflection at the end of the lesson. So as you seen during the video, you have used it during our topic, Moon and the Movements of the Earth. So that's for your Jamboard. Next is your quizzes and interactive sites. 
Quizzes is a free platform that contains gamified quizzes for every subject and not just in science, to play in class or even at home. Pick an existing quiz or create your own for review, formative assessment, and more. Our learners from the grade school to senior high school really enjoyed playing gamified quizzes, especially during their review time or even at the start of the new lesson. You could easily access quizzes since it is a free platform except for the paid additional. You can easily embed your quiz to your learning module or to your learning guide with the use of the generated URL or link for asynchronous session. And also, you can use it during your synchronous classes or session to engage your students and create a better online classroom environment. Moreover, you could share it to your co-teachers or do a collaboration. During synchronous session, you could do it either live, via solo, or teams. And if it's during asynchronous session, you could do it as an assignment or homework. And now, for the interactive sites, the same way as gamified quizzes, our students will be encouraged to enjoy learning since they will be able to interact to the online platform that they are in. So as you see, I will also embed the link so that my students will have a chance to access it even I'm not around. So I will also export this one in PDF or even in PowerPoint. So there you go, that's for your quizzes and your interactive sites. And now let's proceed to the fourth one, Google Earth and Google Docs. Using Google Earth and Maps in Classroom can help visualize abstract concepts, especially during the pandemic, since students can't go out. We recently used Google Earth during our topic about safety and preparedness for natural disasters. I have given my class instructions and afterwards, they use Google Earth to locate their own area or house address. Then they observe if there are hazards such as bodies of water, fault, trees, and other large structures. Then upon learning such, they have chosen one from the three natural disasters, earthquake, volcanic eruption, and or typhoon. And they think of safety tips appropriate for their chosen natural disaster. Then, with the use of Google Docs, I was able to compile their answers. And what's good with that is that teachers and even the students will be able to go back with it during your asynchronous session. So that's for your Google Earth and Google Docs. Now, let's proceed to the next one, using games. So Minecraft is a popular online and offline game for both the young and young at heart. Last school year, I have used it during our topics connected to biology, chemistry, and physics. My students really enjoyed working on their own or even collaborating with other classmates in accomplishing their performance tasks. So the use of games inside one's classroom has many benefits as long as it is used responsibly. So that's for your games. Example is your Minecraft. So last but not the least, Interactive PowerPoint presentation. For those who are more familiar with the use of PowerPoint, we can make our presentations interactive by integrating or embedding hyperlinks and transitions. And these are some samples of my interactive PowerPoint that I have used during my biology class. Even in an offline mode, we could engage our students to participate with the use of Jeopardy and also picture puzzle and more. So that's for your interactive PowerPoint presentation. And now we are at the last part of our session. Those are some of my classroom applications and also platforms that I've been using for my online distance learning. And now here are some additionals that will surely help you make your class engaging and interactive as well. So from Kahoot, to Science Kids to Legends of Learning. And there are a lot more in store when you search online. The most creative people find ways around obstacles because they see them not as roadblocks but as opportunities.
Creativity expands our perception, and along with expanded perception, comes new ways of problem solving. Are you ready to be creative? So let's connect. If you want to find out more about online distance learning and ICT-related topics, kindly visit us in our official a YouTube channel, ICT Tech Tips, and even in Facebook. We can imagine, we can create, and we can definitely make a change. Again, I'm Ms. Hannah Lois T. Navarro, a certified Google Educator Levels 1 and 2, a Microsoft Innovative Educator, and a certified Apple teacher. And lastly, a grade school science teacher of De La Salle Santiago Sobel School, saying thank you and good day.